everyone, this is Lauren from my counselor here at Plexus and today's video is all about high school junior advice and we know that junior year can be a really tough and challenging year and so we want to share the top five high school tips and tricks for 11th grade. So congratulations, you're officially halfway done with high school. Um, we do have advice videos for your freshman year and your sophomore year. Of course, that advice doesn't go away um, when you become a junior, it still is relevant. And so if you haven't watched that video, feel free to jump back to those videos. But here is a quick review of the top five tricks for sophomore year. Um, number one was to strengthen your support system. Number two, maintain great study habits. Number three, prepare for junior year. Number four, deepen your involvement. And number five, get more serious about college. So our first tip is one, turn good grades into great grades and prepare for upcoming exams. So when you submit your college applications, the grade that they look most closely at is your 11th grade. So you may already have good grades, but here we're trying to challenge you, can you turn those to even better grades? So things that you can do is to continue study habits that worked for you. Maybe you have been meeting with friends and making study groups, um, keep doing that. So always be present, participate, and seek support if needed. So being Physically pre present in your class is always important. And the more that you're there, the less likely that you'll miss something. But even if you are sitting in class, think about how you are being present in that class. If you're being distracted by your phone or by other people, right, then we're not as present as we think that we are. Um, participate, keep doing that. If you haven't, right, I challenge you to, answer questions or to ask questions while you're in class, and then also seek support from your peers and also your teacher. You wanna sign up for challenging yet relevant classes. And so if you know what you wanna major in in college, then find the classes that will be helpful for you um, for that major or for that career that you're interested in. If you are interested in being a chemical engineer, right? Chemistry and math are important subjects for you to take in high school and they're relevant for you because you'll continue to take those kinds of classes in college. Also, revise your schedule to prioritize time to prepare for ACT, SAT, and SAT subject test. So, we recommend that you take your SATs during your junior year because by the time that you're a senior, you'll be so busy filling out those college applications, asking for letters of recommendation, um, and just being responsible for other things, that you're at a point in time that you are ready to take the SAT or the ACT. And so get it out of the way, but also after you take it a first time, especially in your junior year, you're able to see how well you did, and then you still have time to take it again if you'd like to. And then also take the pre-SAT or the PSAT um, and then utilize free resources on and off campus when you're preparing for those exams. So if you've already taken the PSAT in your 10th grade, um, you may wanna consider taking it again in your 11th grade because if you are interested in the National Merit Scholarship, then they only consider your PSAT scores from when you take it in 11th grade. Also, when turning your good grades into great grades, I wanna go back to the whole taking relevant classes is think about whether or not you're challenging yourself because if you take AP or IB classes, which are classes meant to prepare you for college or are already at the college level, then getting a B in that class, um, because it is weighted, it shows that you are willing to step outside of your comfort zone, willing to challenge yourself, 
versus taking a regular or lower level class and getting an A. So it's better to do a little worse in a sense in a more challenging class because it just shows that you're willing to take on that challenge versus taking easier courses and then acing those courses. The second tip is to make a difference. So thinking about your extracurricular activities, um, you're at the point in time of high school where you can start making an impact. But keep in mind that you don't wanna stretch yourself too thin. If you've already been in extracurriculars, then continue doing the ones that you're passionate about. And it's all about the quality of extracurriculars that you're in, not the quantity. You want to stick with ones that you're passionate about, that you're genuine about, um, and it's better to have, you know, two versus seven, and, you know, five out of those seven you're not really um, passionate about. And in those extracurriculars, contribute your original ideas and step up. So especially if you've been in that extracurricular activity or sport or organization since your freshman year, you may be ready to actually take on a leadership role, whether that's the president or the secretary um, or, you know, managing one of the events that the clubs put on. I think that it's time for you to think about whether or not you can do that. And then also plan for the summer. And at your age, that could mean a part-time job or activities or programs that are offered during the summer, especially if they're offered by the college that you're interested in. And then also really think about the programs during the summer that are relevant to what you wanna do in the future. And so if you're interested in music and maybe there's a music camp, right, then that might be something that you really enjoy, but also, shows that you're willing to do something that's um, related to what you want to do in the future and that you want to learn more about it. The third tip is to familiarize yourself with financial aid. So when you are narrowing down your college list, I'm sure that the cost of that college is something that you are considering. So knowing how you can pay for college is going to be important in terms of whether or not you will continue and actually apply to that college. So understand the FAFSA process and that's that application and that will be your way to know, you know what financial aid will be offered from that school. Also apply and meet deadlines for scholarships. There are many scholarships and there is always going to be one that you can find that is related to you. There will be ones where you'll need to write essays, ones where you don't have to, national scholarships where anyone in the United States can apply, but then there's also scholarships within your local community um, that you can apply to as well and probably have a better chance at actually obtaining. Also, communicate with your parents or the people in your household and identify action steps. And so it's important that you have this conversation with your parents or your guardians because you never know, you know what they intend to do in terms of paying for college. They may be willing to pay for college and you may have not known that. Um, and that can open the doors to other colleges that you were considering but maybe changed their mind and now you can actually consider them again. So know what they are planning to do or what you can do together. So the fourth tip is to actually begin the college application process. So applications are not usually due until January of your senior year or November. Um, but if you start that process now, even if it's just a little bit, then that will ease your mind and your stress when it comes to doing it in your senior year. So things that you can do during your junior year is to create your first list of colleges. And that 
should be a combination of safety, target, and reach colleges. Ultimately, most students apply to five to seven colleges, and there's a combination of both safety, target, and reach. Um, if you are not um, familiar with what a safety, a target, or a reach school, we also have another video explaining what those mean. Also, when you are creating this list, you wanna identify colleges that align with qualities that are important to you. So qualities besides just, does this college offer my major, is maybe the location of the school is something that's important to you. And that will also help you narrow down your list. If you know that you wanna stay you know, close to home or in state, right, then that's something that you wanna keep in mind. Or maybe you would like to live in a big city. And so it is your goal to live in a city like San Francisco or New York. And so that can help you choose colleges because then you can look for colleges only in those locations. Um, so think about things like that. Regularly meet with your counselor. It's recommended that you met already with your counselor in your freshman and your sophomore year. So continue to do that and update your counselor in terms of what qualities you're looking for in a college or what you hope to do, you know, in your senior year and the classes that you're going to take because they're there to help you. Also attend college fairs, visit college campuses and speak to alumni or college representatives or the people who work in admissions at that college because they can help you gain insight in terms of what that actual experience is going to be like for you. When you visit a campus, then it actually becomes a little bit more real, and then that can also help you decide whether or not you wanna submit an application for that school. A college fair is also um, a really beneficial event to attend because then you can get exposure um, and information from many colleges just in one setting. And then lastly is to practice balance because this is also going to be important, not just for your senior year, but for your life after high school. So make sure to take breaks and have fun. And so don't get caught up in all of the academics or trying to obtain the highest SAT scores, but also know that you still are a teenager, and so take a break and have some fun as well. Um, spend time with close friends, and hopefully at this point, you are aligned and your friends are people who have the same goals as you and who are supportive of your goals. Um, also, clean up your social media profiles. So just know that you know, especially if you're in sport or if you plan on doing an extracurricular at that college, um, they may look at your profile and depending on the information that you share, that can negatively or positively affect, you know, their consideration in terms of accepting you or not. And then also prior prioritize rest. Um, it's not a good idea to do all-nighters all the time or to stay up late, um, but figure out a schedule that works for you where you can still go to bed at a decent hour because the more that you're rested, then the more energy that you'll have the next day and the more likely you'll do better. So to sum up all of the junior year advice, here are a few takeaways. Your junior year is the most important year. Um, this is the time for you to really demonstrate growth and resilience because this is the year that they will closely look at. And this is also the time for you to start taking those exams that are also considered when you submit your college applications. And if you didn't do so well in your freshman and your sophomore year, this is your chance to show an upward trend um, and that you are doing better. And then also think of your junior year as a way to prepare for your senior year. And the more that you prepare for your senior year, the more that you can enjoy your senior year because you will have a lot going on in your last year of high school. So finally, please download the Plexus app if you haven't already, then that allows you for instant notifications, especially from my counselor. And 
After using the app, please rate and review it. We appreciate your feedback, whether that's positive or constructive. And then also, feel free to chat with my counselor at any time. Um, you can ask questions regarding this video, if anything was unclear, or if you would like more information about anything that you've seen in this video, or you can always chat with my counselor about anything that you need in terms of your specific journey to college. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Have a great junior year and we'll see you in our next video.